Hello and welcome to topic 3 of MATE 210 on crystalline, amorphous, and semi-crystalline structures. In this topic we'll be focusing on how atoms organize themselves in three-dimensional space and how that organization differs between metals, polymers, and ceramics. Let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the big picture. So remember our big picture consists of the four boxes that are bold composition and processing which together affect the structure of the material and that structure determines the performance of the material. We're going to be looking specifically at structure a lot in topic three. We'll be looking at how atoms arrange themselves in three-dimensional space and there's three choices here. They can form metallic crystals which are the simplest form of crystals, ionic crystals which are more complicated, and amorphous and semi-crystalline polymers. Within the metallic crystals, we'll look at three primary crystals, FCC, BCC, and HCP. And all of this together will, go, will help us to understand how the density of a material is determined, which is a measure of its properties. Well, let's start with density. I'd like to start with properties first because it's something real that you can relate to. Density is defined as a measured quantity within a defined spatial region. So let's go look at some examples. Here's a picture of the stellar gas density around our sun. And you can see how the gases are ejected in high densities down the lower portion of the picture down here. This is a high density area, so that's one example. Another example is population density in China. You can see that most of the population of China is found around the coastline and very low population density is found in the interior. You can also look at bear density in Ontario, Canada which just happens to be important because I used to go canoeing in Ontario, Canada, Canada all the time. Yes, and I ran into a few bears along the way. But in materials engineering, we define density as the mass of material divided by the volume that that mass occupies, or rho equals m over v. All right, now that we have a definition for density, let's take a look at atomic arrangement. It turns out that atoms organize themselves in one of two ways, either in regular crystalline patterns or as amorphous materials. Amorphous means without shape. It's from the Greek. Let's start by looking at crystalline structures first. In a crystalline structure, the atoms are organized in a regular pattern that's predictable. This is an image from a high-resolution scanning tunneling electron microscope of a crystalline solid. And what you're seeing are the electron clouds of the atoms that are organized into a crystalline pattern. This is one of the highest resolution images ever taken of a material. The, the resolution is approximately 0.7 angstroms. Remember, an angstrom is 10 to the minus 10th meters. That's pretty small. So what are some of the crystal structures that we encounter in nature? First of all, there are hundreds of crystal structures, and some are more complex than others. We're going to focus on the simplest crystal structures in this class. Crystals can be made up of individual atoms. So, for example, most metals consist of crystals of individual atoms. Or they could be simple molecules that are formed into crystals, such as ice, which is made up of water mo molecules organized into a pattern. Or they can be made up of more complex groups of atoms, like barium titanate, which is made up of barium, titanium, and oxygen or large molecules which form into crystals, such as polymer crystals and sugar and proteins. One of the terms that we're going to have to become familiar with is the unit cell. The unit cell is a single crystal which completely defines the crystal geometry by being continuously repeated. So think of a brick in a wall. If you know the, the shape and geometry of that brick, you can specify the location of every brick in the wall and therefore define the geometry of the entire wall by defining the geometry of just that one brick. That's what a unit cell is. It allows us to define the geometry of the entire material by just defining the geometry of one unit cell. So we're going to focus on several unit cells in this class. There are many types of unit cells and they're organized into what are called the Bravais lattices. The Bravais lattices apply to the crystal structures of most metals. There's the cubic system which in which you have the simple cubic the face-centered cubic and the body-centered cubic, and we'll learn more about each of these in a moment. There's the tetragonal system, which is basically a cubic structure with one side stretched. And in the tetragonal system, you have simple tetragonal and body-centered tetragonal. There's the hexagonal system, which is a six-sided cell. There's the orthorhombic system, 
Orthorhombic means that all of the sides are at right angles, but none of the sides are the same length. There's the rhombohedral system, where you have sides that are the same length, but the angles are no longer 90 degrees. Monoclinic systems, where the angles are no longer 90 degrees, and two of the sides do not have the same length. And triclinic systems, where they're no longer 90 degrees, and none of the lengths of the sides are the same. That's the most complicated crystal. We're going to focus on the ones in red, the cubic system, the tetragonal system, and the hexagonal system. That makes up almost all the metals on the periodic table. We'll start looking at crystal structures in the next topic.